Well, hello. Thank you so much for joining me for another Bible Prophecy Bible Study. And today we're going to take a look at the cloud of witnesses. We want to learn a little bit more about them, and we want to see the prophecies that involve them. So in order to do so, we need to remember the three things the Father wants, what He wants to secure through the end time events, Daniel's 70th week. So the first thing He wants to secure is a bride for His Son. The second thing He wants to secure is He wants to replace the wicked rulers, powers, and principalities in the heavenly places and replace them with a righteous government, which will be the church. And then He wants to replace the earthly wicked rulers and politicians, and He's going to do that with the remnant. So this is the purpose for the pre-trib upward rapture of the bride, the mid-trib upward rapture of the church, and the ending of the tribulation, sideways rapture of the remnant to the barn. So those are the three harvests, the first fruits harvest, the main harvest, and the gleanings. So all the Bible prophecies for the end time events are hanging on one of these three groups. So in order to understand a little bit more about the cloud of witnesses, we need to keep this in mind. And we need to determine who is being spoken to and you know, what are the other groups involved so here? So Hebrews 12.1 from the New American Standard Bible reads thus, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. All right, so it will help us out if we will take a look at what was written just a few verses previous in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 39 and 40, the last two verses of Hebrews 11. And it's written, And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised, because God had provided something better for us, so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. All right, what is going on here? Well, it helps us to read these verses as if the pre-trib rapture of the bride has already occurred, that the 144,000 Jewish evangelists have already been grafted into the church, and now they are fulfilling Israel's mandate, which has always been to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations, beginning with the Jew first and then the Gentile. So when we know that this is the schedule after the pre-trib rapture bride, that the two witnesses and the 144,000 Jews will step into their ministry, now this is giving us a little bit more understanding of Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. And so the writer of Hebrews, who I think is Paul, I think his identity is hidden on purpose, that he did not want to write who the letter was from because he is going to the Jew first. And if these non-believing Jews would have saw this letter that was written by the Apostle Paul, the way he always started his letters, these non-believing Jews would have thought to themselves, Psh, that traitor, he used to be one of us. He used to be a Pharisee, in fact. And now he's switched sides and he's joined the church and he's preaching this Christianity stuff. I'm not even going to read this letter. So you see, Paul being brilliant, it was very prudent for him to hide his identity that he is the author of this letter. It's so that non-believing Jews would read the book of Hebrews, the letter of Hebrews, who is written by a Jew to Jews, they're going to be more likely to read it and gain understanding. So this is why I think the letter is written by the Apostle Paul. And so the Apostle Paul is acknowledging the pre-trib rapture bride has already occurred. They have gained approval through their faith. But there's, some, there's a certain promise they have not received, and they won't receive it until something happens to the Left Behind Church. Okay? So the Left Behind Church 
has got some benchmarks. The left behind church needs to do something before one of the promises to the pre-trib rapture bride is fulfilled. Okay, bear with me here. So look at Hebrews 11 verse 40 again, because God has provided something better for us. So something better for the left behind church. Well, that word better is, comes from two Greek words, G2909, which means nobler, best, better. So God has provided something more noble for the left behind church that the pre-trib raptured bride isn't going to get. She's not going to get it in, until something happens to the church. Okay, it also comes from the word Strong's G2904, which means vigor, dominion, mightily, and strength. Well, as you have learned here, the Revelation 12.5 man-child, who is going to rule like a rod of iron, that's one of their names, man-child and the rod of iron, they're going to be raptured and their first task is they're going to throw the wicked rulers, powers, and principalities that are residing currently in the heavenly places, they're going to throw them off their thrones down to earth and then the church is going to sit down in those thrones and rule and reign with Christ. Well, this word better is explaining that. It, they, get, they have a nobler, a more noble promise. They are going to have dominion and a might and a strength that the bride does not possess. Okay, goes on to say in verse 40, so that apart from us, the left behind church, they, the pre-trib raptured bride, may not be made perfect. Okay, that word perfect is Strong's G5048. This is amazing. That word perfect means consummate, finish, fulfill. And it comes from another word that means neuter. All right, so what do we do when we neuter an animal? Well, it's neither male nor female in a sense, all right? So this verifies what we teach that the marriage of the bride and the groom, the bride and the lamb, does not happen until after the mid-trib rapture of the church, until this left behind church is raptured up and they throw down the red dragon and all of his wicked angels that are residing in the second heaven. You see, because they are the left behind church when they're raptured. That is the man child. That is the children of the bride chamber. Every citizen of the kingdom of God who has a glorified body, resurrected or raptured, must be at the wedding of the lamb because it is primarily his coronation ceremony as king, officially crowned king. Because if you will remember, David was anointed king when he was very young, but he was not officially crowned king in a ceremony before his nation until many years later. All right, so the mid-trib rapture of the church must happen before the bride and groom are married in heaven. Every citizen of heaven must be there. So when Paul wrote, so that apart from us, the left behind church, the bride would not be made perfect. She would not consummate her marriage. And then she, she's, no, she's neuter, because we know men and women are part of that bride group. So I hope you're understanding, and I know you guys are, because you're very spiritual. You are understanding things. You're, you're tracking with us here. <laughs> And see, this follows the type and shadow that Mary and Joseph gave birth to the Christ child Jesus while they were betrothed, and then they were not married until after the Christ child was born, because Joseph kept her a virgin until after his birth, the scriptures say. So this follows the same type and shadow. While we are betrothed, 
the bride is raptured up. We nurture, serve the children of the bride chamber, the left behind church. Then they are raptured at mid-trib and they are more noble than we are. And many people get very offended at this channel because we teach that the, it's only the bride that goes up pre-trib and it's the church that goes up mid-trib and they think we're calling them like second class citizens. And that's not the truth at all. Because in fact, they have a more noble calling than us. God loves them just as much. They just have a different ministry. Let's now, with that understanding, read Hebrews 12, 1 again. Paul writes, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses, the bride, the raptured bride, who's already in her glorified outfit, surrounding us, let us, the Left Behind Church, also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us, the Left Behind Church, run with endurance the race that is set before us. Because you see, they're going to have a little bit different race to run than we, the bride, do right now. The Left Behind Church are going to be in the beast system. They are going to watch the nation of Israel pick the fake king, install a mere man as their king on the throne of their nation. There is going to be far more technology that is surveilling them and oppressing them. They are not going to have as many helps perhaps on the internet, the concordances, the commentaries. They may not have our YouTube channels. So this is why it's going to be the bride that is traversing heaven and earth on her white horse and helping the left behind church understand Bible prophecy. This is why we must get Bible prophecy correct because we're gonna be teaching them. We're gonna be correcting their Bible prophecy interpretations and they'll get a lot figured out simply because they'll know we're gone and they're left behind. Verse two, Hebrews 12, two. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So Paul is saying, Keep your eyes on Jesus. Look at what he put up with. He put up with a lot of humiliation, all while growing up and people thinking that, you know, Joseph was not his father, all while thinking that, you know, he, he was never taught the scriptures, all while hanging on the cross, people sneering at him and saying, well, if you are God, get down off the cross. You know, every one of us would have just wanted to get down off the cross and slap them in the face and showed them a thing or two, right? But no, Jesus just took it. He just took that humiliation because of the joy set before him. He knew what the promises were. He understood Bible prophecy and that helped him get through what he needed to endure. So too, the left behind church, they are going to need to have accurate understanding of Bible prophecy because that will help them endure what they're going to be going through. So Paul is saying, do not grow weary and lose heart. Keep your eyes on Jesus and notice what he endured. Verse four, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. Wow, many left behind Christians in the first half of Daniel's 70th week, they will be martyred. And through these verses, the Holy Spirit is preparing them for martyrdom and exhorting them. Just keep your eyes on the promises. Have faith in the promises Jesus did as he was hanging on the cross, as he was being tortured, as he was growing up. Jesus kept his eyes on the promises. He knew Bible prophecy. He knew he was going to get a glorified, resurrected body and be made king, be crowned king. 
so this is what I'm hoping you guys are grasping from this passage and I really feel like some of you are even beyond us because of the things you're sharing in the comments section and the encouragement you're giving us that you are understanding these things even though mainstream evangelicals are teaching something completely different. Many of the things they're teaching are not found in scripture. We are sticking with the scriptures because we understand the Bible is a book of history and it is a book of prophecy because history is cyclical. Prophecy is cyclical. So this is why we are reading now the New Testament as if the Preacher raptured bride is gone, and now the left behind church is on the earth during that first half of Daniel's 70th week. They'll be raptured at mid-trib before God's wrath is poured out on the day of atonement on that sixth year of Daniel's 70th week, and it will be poured out for that full year till the day of atonement on the seventh year of Daniel's 70th week. So I hope this helps. I hope it's just another little nugget that will get you started in looking at Hebrews chapter 11 and chapter 12 a little bit deeper because we're going to continue in this chapter in the next video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye! Bye.